you guys might not think of it this way because Cody always can get the internet a stirring. He knows how to push the internet button of people. But I don't my I typically don't have that not innate ability. But I put up one tweet today and it's got probably more likes than I've ever I, any tweet I ever had. Yeah. Uh in the whole time and I didn't even think it was that good of a tweet and but I do believe it in some ways or I know is uh Terrace Marshall Jr. may be the uh one of the biggest indictments that Matt Rule was a fraud and Cody had a good response to this. He said you misspelled Bradley Bozeman. <laughs> the, <laughs> the the thing about this is Bradley Bozeman comes out and we I haven't like I need to go back I guess and watch him specifically but graded high everything tells us he had a very good day, right? The eye yeah. test, the run game productivity, mm -hmm. the continued what uh what uh, Steve Wilkes said, winning in the trenches, right? So that I haven't seen any evidence that he didn't have a good day. On top of that is uh, PJ Walker had a fantastic day and it was his first time starting at center, right? Um, so yeah. like, it's like, there's no, so this is incredible here. The thing that's bizarre to me about this is we all knew it. We all saw it. It's, this is like, I mean, I want to be more excited about this, but we all are like, why didn't this happen earlier? And this continues to just yep. what go back to the point of my tweet with Terrace Marshall Jr. to be an indictment of the Matt Rule era. It's like, how can this, how can this guy be, it's like free Malik. What is it? Who is the guy that the, it was all, it was in prison? And they all, and he might still be for all I know. Remember they used to do the hashtag free uh, Meek Mills. Oh, free Meek. Meek, Meek yeah, Mill. <laughs> yeah. I said Malik. Uh, this is like well, there are players on this team that we should be hashtag free Bo, uh, Bradley Bozeman, hashtag free Terrace Marshall Jr., hashtag free Chuba Hubbard to the rest of the world. How about um, this? <laughs> How about this ha hashtag leader of men? Because Steve Wilkes is a leader of men. And to me, it's not a coincidence that you see all these positive changes start to happen yeah. as soon as Steve Wilkes becomes our head coach. And by the way, shout out to Dr. Rosen Rosen for the 499 love bomb. He says, at least Wilkes is the leader of men, unlike Matt Rule. Also, the like button needs to Hulk smash. You heard that, dude. And um, you know, like stand on, stand on Bradley Bozeman. You know, I, why would we sign this man in free agency when our offensive line was so god awful last year, and yet you don't even give this man a chance? Like it was literally an injury. It was an injury that that uh, you know gave Bradley Bozeman this shot. When Pat Flynn got hurt, and it's just absolutely asinine that you wouldn't play the guys that you signed for these express purposes. It, it just it, it makes no sense in the world to me. Bradley <coughs> Bozeman is a much bigger, strong man than Pat Elflin. He's much more built to play center. And to me, it's not a coincidence that all of a sudden, after you trade Christian McCaffrey and after Bradley Bozeman comes in, now our run game just takes off like a bat mm -hmm. out of hell. Like, dude, to me, Bradley Bozeman, and I know last podcast, Tony, you asked, you know, what what is the true indictment on on Matt Rule? Yeah. You said you said Terrace Marshall Jr. To me, it's that man right there, big Bradley Bozeman. I'm loving it. Well, the, the the argument for that is um, he did get hurt. He he was announced as winning that uh, that position in the preseason, um, but he got hurt, and he was hurt for a while. And then uh, that offensive line was actually doing a pretty good job together. And so I think that there was a, a not. I mean, I kind of understand the not putting him in there if there was a meshing happening of that offensive line. Um, because we all know what happens when you start to retool the offensive line in the middle of the season. Things get fucking crazy sometimes. Um, but nonetheless, the fact that he came in there and blew it out of the water, it, it is still an indictment on that guy. And so I think that that is a, uh, I, again, I can't be more thrilled with the way this offensive line has been playing. And I don't, 
I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for somebody to take that step in that quarterback position because I'm telling you what, man, it is. It is. We're primed to be a really explosive offense if we can put this shit together in and, and other facets other than just that offensive line. That's the hardest thing to build. We need Tommy Trimble to continue to step up. We need Terrace Marshall not to drop those balls. We need DJ Moore to continue to blow this off the roof. And we need those two running backs, Chuba and Deontay, to just continue to chug it out. Because I'm telling you right now, if P.J. Walker is that guy, this is going to be a hard offense to stop if they can get it together. But that's a big if. So uh, some of the chat says Cody just likes to prove his shit takes. Hey, does anyone want to go back to Pat Elflin? Anyone in the chat? Hey. Anyone here on the podcast? Well, let's Has not I, worry about this. It's not. Let's not worry about receipts and this and that. No, I'm, not even like, saying, I'm saying does any out of, out of everyone here, uh, and I'm not even trying to shit on Pat. Elfley. It's not. This he is my question to you. No, he didn't do a good. He did a better job. He's he better at center than he put. Here is the the real question though, is that or if if we want to go back and really look at the way that the Bradley Bozeman story unfolded is that the Carolina Panthers in this offseason went and retooled their offensive line, right? They were found ways to upgrade it significantly. They draft a number one prospect at left tackle. They go and add uh, Austin Corbett at guard, and they signed Bradley Bozeman, who was uh, touted as a strong center in free agency. These were all distinctly made moves, right? And then when we get into training camp, though, the competition that was created by Matt Rule alienated Bradley Bozeman for a while. And while you said he was named, I think CK said he was the name the starter, Matt Rule didn't say that until he was actually hurt, I feel like. It was like right in that week he said, well, if I had to start them today, this would be the starting lineup. That was what he said. And he had never even run Bozeman with the ones yet. Which is so my, stupid. Right. Is my simply, is this, is like, we're looking at this from the outside going, we knew this should be happening. And somehow it wasn't. Now, interestingly, to segue this to a different conversation related, I was listening to, um, this was Raleigh Radio today, and the Adam Gold Show, it's like around the noon hour, and Joe Person came on. And Joe Person, now what was strange is Joe Person is now speaking more confidently in things that we had speculated the entire time, kind of rumors. And now he is kind of speaking as those are kind of truths. And when, what I mean by that, an example of this, is he said Matt Rule had control of the 53. Matt Rule had control of the 53, and Scott Fitter was brought in here to play nice and be a nice guy and help navigate these waters. But these decisions are largely about player personnel on that field and making this 53-man roster were guided and steered by Matt Rule. And so it didn't sound like this. It sounded like this. is this entire Bozeman um whatever Eflin the T Terrace Marshall Jr the who was your guy the the guard from Alabama these are Matt I Rules did, uh, finger Matt Rules fingerprints are all over this yes mm -hmm. all over them all over and my, if you listen to my original criticism of Matt Rule is this man does not know how to evaluate talent meaning doesn't know how to take the best guys and put them at the best position possible for them. And that's always been a problem for him, you know, and having so much control over the roster and the final 53. Yeah, man. And by the way, shout out to YB Jordan. He said Joe came on because Cody had to say it first. Hey, man, we don't normally drop too many sources, but the ones that we did, they're looking pretty damn good, man. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's like to me, your offensive line, specifically your offensive interior, both of your guards and your center, those might be the three very most important positions in your entire offense because they provide the pocket in which your quarterback is going to throw the football from. And, yeah, you need to run the football, 
but you have to be able to pass it too. And if you don't have a pocket, you don't have a chance. I was thinking about this subject, Cody. Is the re- and you've you've been uh, saying this for probably two two years now on this show. Is that it's like this? The new NFL actually makes this center more important, right? Absolutely. The center of the line and true. And one of the things though that really gives this truth is if you can't win consistently in there, you can't you can't game plan to fix right. it. You can't. So if you have if you have a weakness on the edge, or something like you can chip, you can put a uh, a lot, an extra. Uh, you can put the running back back there to block, and you can do some things. The running back can't step into the middle of the hole, the middle of the pocket, and then it screw up the entire throw mechanics of the of the quarterback. So there's really nothing you can do if you lose that center right uh, of the line in a passing NFL, the way that you could, the only, the real only way to negate that is like, if you're losing that is to run the football. And in this NFL, you're running the football less and you're running the football up the gut mm-hmm. off the, what, uh, what do they call it? A gap. Yeah. But yeah. Right, right in the A gaps. And by you're the way, doing that you're... less and less in the NFL. So it becomes a more yeah. one-on-one situation between the guard center and the defensive tackles. And if your interior is getting destroyed, then that means most of the time you're going to leave in a running back or a tight end to help block if pressure comes in the middle. So now that you're not having to do that, you're freeing up a guy to be able to, to be used as a check down or make him leak outside and have him go upfield. Like now your, your offensive playbook opens up to literally everything that you want, all kinds of different run plays, pin and pulls, which is incredibly important with your guards and centers um, and just the pass protection. I cannot remember the last time the Carolina Panthers had a consistent downfield passing attack. It's been too long. And part of the reason is because we didn't have the offensive line or the quarterback to be able to do so. And that's why this win against Tampa Bay was so invigorating because all of the components that we have been in such sore need of over the past few years, we saw them, man. We saw the downfield football. We saw the interior dishing out pancakes. Like, dude, right now we're rolling, man. I have no reason to not believe in this team going forward. I know it's a small sample size, but it's just what this Panther fan base needed right now, man. Without a doubt, without question. Before we go any further... Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. The number's 252-228-5098. That's 252-228-5098. We want to get your uh thoughts on PJ Walker, on Matt Rules, fingerprints on Bradley Bozeman, Terrace Marshall Jr. Am I the only one that sees a guy that could contribute to a team and uh someone who needs to just be given an opportunity because you drafted him for this to see if you got a player? I want to know your thoughts on this matter. Go ahead, Cody. Yeah, and uh, listen, before we before we go any further, you know, th- there's a lot of people uh, that have been waiting for a long time. You know, we've already been doing this 45 minutes, and they're like, yeah, we believe in the Panthers. Yeah, yeah, PJ's good. Yeah, yeah, Bradley Bozeman. But it's the shame. We need to be shamed, damn it. And there's only one guy who truly does it the way that they like. So why don't you them do it how they like be? Papa. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, I want to say welcome to winning football. Welcome to a Carolina Panthers team that somehow finds a way to give you hope in the most hopeless of times. You see Steve Wilkes come in here, take a take a team from tanking to, to competing in some way, shape, or form in one game? We can chalk up the Rams game to a short week, to an unfortunate circumstance. But I tell you what, you guys have come here to hear us talk about it, to continue to chat about it, but you haven't hit the like button yet. Well, I have one thing to say to all you absolute freaks. Subscriber shame. One hundred ninety people. 79 thumbs up 
hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell so we can whoop up on that YouTube algorithm and get seen by as many people as possible and to be notified every single time the Speed Panthers podcast goes live. We're always putting out new content on the channel. We're always thinking of new ways to interact with the fans. This is a podcast for the fans, by the fans. Tony Don, what's up next? I want to know, uh, CK brought, brought this up in the chat, is what has one win one week later done to the power ranking, the NFL power rankings? Uh, we saw after that Rams loss where the Panthers did not even score a touchdown is that uh, we were at the bottom. At the bottom. Are we still at the bottom, CK? Um, so the, it's quite interesting. The power rankings, um, for the most part, we moved up a little bit for most of them. You know, I think we were pretty much uh, at the bottom of the list for every one of these guys, except for maybe one person. Um, Sports Ill Illustrated is the only one that still has us at 32, which is hysterical because they have the Bucks at eight still after their situation that's taken place. Sports Illustrated, Sports Illustrated is garbage based just on that solely they still got the falcons at 19th and the uh, saints are at 28th so they do have that maybe in the right spot but somehow the buccaneers lose not only to the panthers in a handed fashion but or in, in, a, in a i guess convincing fashion fashion but they also lose to the the pittsburgh steelers the week before and the, mm -hmm. the buccaneers two games in have still found a way on Sports Illustrated to be number eight in the league on their power rankings. Absolutely hysterical, but for the most part, NFL uh, has us at uh, NFL.com has us at 30. ESPN has us at 30. CBS Sports has us at 31, um, moved us up one spot. Athletic has us at 30. Um, and Pro Football Talk has us at 25. And the Buccaneers um, have moved, uh, or the 14 for them. Um, but the Saints are at 29th in their in their rankings which is uh i think fitting but i tell you what it, anything that has the buccaneers based on their performance this year anything that has the buccaneers above 20 right now is a, a absolute travesty there's no they have no place being above 20 right now what's the highest that we're ranked according to all of those 25. Hmm. Okay. People just don't want to let go, man. They no. don't want like like it, it, oh, e even much, looking yeah. at what they're seeing in front of their faces. They don't want to let go. It's like like I mean, yeah, honestly, but like, is that think... what you're upset about, Greg? Is like I'm not upset about the Panthers being ranked thirty right now. Oh, no, I'm not upset I don't about that at me. all. No, no, no. I'm just saying, as far as like like the Bucks still being in the position they are and stuff like that, like people just aren't ready to let go. Like I they disagree still with like... all of this Brady talk that everybody is having. Brady has eight touchdowns through seven games. He has. He's got. He's playing Brady on a team that has game. been decimated by the offensive line. Their offensive line has been decimated. Their I'll, wide receiver core has been injured, which is, is look, I'm not, I watch him. He's making the throws, dude. He was off no, a little bit. Not. He was off. He was off look. in this game, uh, made some bad plays, mm -hmm. but he had some that were there, dude, that were real. Like, yeah. it's not like he's can't physically play the game anymore. But, right. And, and that's what I'll, I'll defend you, Tony, in this. I think that there's a failure across the board, similar to our offense, right? Um, when we were doing really bad, it was not just one person, right? Baker wasn't helping things, but it was a failure across the board, mm -hmm. like drops uh, to, to you know, offensive line, maybe not holding up their end of the bargain early on in the season um, to, to, you know, again, Baker being bad and bad play calling. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, I think that Tom Brady has a little bit of that mixed with the injuries. But the thing is, is like they had such depth, like for instance, at wide receiver, you can't use that as an yeah. excuse. They had, yeah. they had uh, Mike Evans, who did have a big drop. Don't get me wrong, but you had Chris Godwin, Russell Gage isn't a bad player. Um, there, they didn't have, they had Leonard Fournette. The only thing they were really missing was Cameron Brait and uh, some offensive line positions, which is a big, big issue. We all know that. But Brady is also known for getting the ball out really quickly, and That's no matter how ball. bad his offensive line is, he's usually really good. He was bad. He was and, bad. And Tony, like, th there were some big time throws that he just sailed. I mean, he, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, no, he missed some, some he missed some clear opportunities. I'm not saying that, but it's not. I think it, dropped interceptions as well. 
like Jay Z said in the chat, there were like three dropped interceptions that that should have been ours. Well, what's irritating is there was one play that was just a simple out route, and and Tom Brady throws the ball too far out, and the commentators even said, "Oh, look at that! Tom Brady put it in the right spot. The receiver just didn't run the route right." And I'm like, "No, Tom Brady just put it out there too far. The receiver was open." He said Tom Brady wouldn't miss a throw like that. Yes, he can. He's oh, not yeah. perfect, and people just need to get that out of there. Look, he is still playing at a decent level, but he's not the guy that he was before. Before he, wouldn't he miss could those, overcome these things that he had. He I wouldn't mean, miss I those throws. He's five years old. Huh? He, he about threw an interception at the very end of the game. Like yeah, if, Tom, mean, Tom Brady. Like that's the thing I don't like about Tom Brady is how much I, I, he deserves some benefit of the doubt. But yeah. I think you've also got to like the nobody will re, nobody. Everyone refuses to acknowledge when he does anything bad exactly. in the in the media. Right? Like oh well, the, he's got a failure across the board. He does, but Tom Brady also looked bad. And he did. He's not playing well. He's not playing good football right now. Um, man, it's a new era. New era of football is. Uh, Greg was talking about this on the post game show. The changing of the mantle uh, for so many things. But then, uh, CK sent us a message uh, on Twitter, and it said that PJ Walker and Taylor Heineke both won on Sunday. They were both in the XFL, and Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady both lost to them <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> Taylor Heineke, uh, look, is I want to get your thoughts, folks, um, and this is interesting. Let's go ahead to the next topic because Cody yeah. Lashney is so pumped about um, this team. Let's go, baby. And, and this opportunity to uh, become a better, to, to go after the division. I mean, this guy is even thinking about trading for people. Uh, and look, is that Tom Brady's washed in this division and Cody Lashney, boy, you, I, I want to know, is he going overboard folks? I want you guys to call in, but look, check this out is Cody Lashney thinks there's a change into the guard and Carolina found their guy. Let's see if I can get this, make sure this works right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. My name is Willie. Really. I keep the lady. Did Carolina find their guy, Willie Beeman? Steaming Willie Beeman got them girls creaming. Got Cody hey. Lashley like that. Uh. Come on, come on, man. come on. My name is Willie. Willie. Willie Beeman. Willie Beeman. Oh my goodness. Movie. That's what Dude. I was at uh, first. I know he loves that movie. Bro. Too. I feel <laughs> like PJ Walker is kind of like a. Willie first he's like a <laughs> undersized black guy that like is like he could he reminds me of Jamie not reminds me of Jay but has Jamie Fox the was that yeah has all the talent does not have the bravado of Willie Beeman though no, but I, mean, I know but Cody Lashney to... loves that vi that movie, and he's all over here talking about PJ Walker, and that's what I was doing in the background is down and is converting that file download. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on Cody. Come on, Willie Beeman. Oh, dude, that one, that's what, that, that might be my favorite football movie of all time. I don't care what nobody says. That and Remember the Titans, and I'll probably even put that above Remember the Titans. Um, and, yeah, man, look, I know everybody thinks I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. Oh, Cody, we, we won one game. Oh, Tom Brady missed some throws that he should have had. Oh, pa -pa -pa. Look, dude, but whatever. We've done the negative Panther fan thing forever now. If I need to, to to get high off of this very brief light up that the Panthers have given us in beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, well, light me up, brother, because I don't give a damn. I look at all those other teams, the New Orleans Saints, who we already whooped up on, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who we already whooped up on, and I'm sorry, but the Atlanta Falcons are always going to be the sorry ass Atlanta Falcons. We're one game back. Than us. We're one game back. That's right. That's now, right. And uh, none of these teams are better than us. What is crazy about this is that if we were three and four right now as a team, uh, we would not be giving up on the season two weeks. You know, it's like how you get to three and four. Um, the right. problem is, is if we were three and four, Matt Rule probably would still be our coach. It's true. That's a that's the truth. But like it's like is that when you're one and five, 
the idea of turning that into four and five. Like if it, one of these teams that goes four and five, right, over the next two games, they're not like, oh, we had the worst season in the world. They're still saying we got to get above 500. We got to get above 500. It's one game away you know for like? us to be even. Uh, and at the very worst, we are going, well, I guess we could fall behind, further behind if we lose. That's the key. We got to keep up. Now it's about keeping up in the race before we can pull ahead. Did you know what? It's like the train was getting ready to leave the tracks. Oh, but the Panthers had to drop a big hot deuce right before the train was about to leave. And dude, that big mat, that big deuce, that was fat rule, baby. We had to drop him off. We had to bring the Browns to the Super Bowl, if you know what I'm saying. But now we're feeling lighter. We're feeling better about ourselves. We feel like we lost 10 pounds of dead weight. And, man, we made that train just before it left the station. That's how I'm feeling right now. And, look, when you mention all the things that we've already talked about, the defense being legit, Derek Brown and Brian Burns turning it on, and we haven't even talked about J.C. Horn and Jeremy Chin probably going to come back this week at least as far as I've, I've heard, mixed with our offensive line playing better than it has in years, mixed with P.J. Walker giving us that spark that we've so desperately come on, needed. Come on, come on, come on. And, come on. and our man D.J. Moore has risen, risen from the dead. Man, he has been revitalized, and all he needed was a come on, come on, come on. A PJ Walker wonder, baby. Come on, come on, man. Come on. My name is Willie. My name I'm is Willie. I'm telling you, bro. PJ Walker is that spark right now. And you're not pissing on my cornflakes, bro. I'm believing. Um, well, so much so, uh, the number's 252-228-5098. Is Co Cody overhyped? I see some people in the chat going, this guy's, look at these grown men. Yeah, damn right. This is the most fun <laughs> thing to do on a Tuesday. You're a grown man watching these grown men right. do this shit, <laughs> which is even cooler. Sure. Um, I Cody's so pumped. He wants to damn go trade for ba Bradley Chubb right now. Um, I mean, I hey, a, a lot of people were... People were talking about it. I know that people will, uh, you know, I uh, think that we might still need to. We probably need to pay him soon. But hey, if we're just talking, and hey, it's a podcast. That's what we do. We're just talking. You know, <laughs> then, uh, imagine, uh, imagining Brian Burns uh, as the bookend to Bradley Chubb. I'm just saying, insane, man. We don't say. What do you think? Uh, my question: What? When is his deal? Is he at the same class as Brian Burns? Uh, Greg, why don't if they were, up, if they up. were, I think they're one, one year. And the Echo is back. You're talking I about think Chubb? they're one year different. Yeah, Bradley Chubb just what year was drafted. Um, I think it was. It's technically the possible. Before. Then the you could before. do it if they're not in the same class because you could. 2018, French. Bradley Chubb. Sorry. What was Burns? He was 18, won't he? Mm. I think he was. Was he? Uh, 2019. Oh, okay, awesome. So you could find a way where you don't have to do two contracts in the same year. You have the franchise. You have the fifth year option. You have the franchise tag. Uh, for maybe Brian Burns, this okay. would actually be a realistic way of like making, uh, through a free agent acquisition, a dominant defensive line right off the gate because you would have the money if you drafted a quarterback next year mm -hmm. you yeah, know I mean, as long as you're not going to go out into free agency and get a quarterback which you probably can't anyway that, i mean you don't want to make a mistake like you've done in the past like the mm -hmm. colts are dealing with with matt ryan oh, so terrible. you could well, draft that, a quarterback yeah. and roll with matt corral and on the other side of Bra Brian Burns, you, when you brought this up, I thought this sounds that's, stupid. That's this might even be a good thing to do, even if you don't expect to be good this uh, this year at right. all. Just to yeah, do because it, even like, if it doesn't, if, even if it doesn't work out, all right, let let just him go, go ahead and resign market. him and let's yeah. go. Well, like, even if it doesn't work out, let him hit the free market just like Hassan Reddit did. If he's not in our long term plans, I think this would give us another boost 
to fight for this division. And isn't it damned how awesome it is when you're not paying a quarterback all this money next year? We don't have to pay big-time quarterback money. Why shouldn't the Panthers be used the rest of their dollars to bolster this football team while we have a good defense, man? And he's from he went to North Carolina State, so he's already used to the Carolinas. Bro, I'm I'm down for it, man. We have to talk about how much you would be willing to give up for Bradley Chubb, but with He'd what probably... we got back for Christian McCaffrey, we have the ammunition now. Yeah, but I think that it's similar to the Brian Burns situation, right? When people were offering us two first rounds for Brian Burns, if we are to take that as as fact, uh, Bradley Chubb is in the same category. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think so. Yeah. I would love it, man. It might not be I would wonder what, what the cost would uh, truly be. 28. So they're going to lose him, though. In t- they can't. He's in his fifth year option right now. 18, 19, 20, 21, yeah. 22. Dove, they're going to lose. They, they probably Dove. can't get a first. They probably can't get as much because they don't have next year. That's maybe what Brian Burns' value is. He's um, he's actually not as good as Brian Burns. He's 5.5 sacks, one year with one sack. Well, he did get 12 one he year. He was hurt. Yeah. So hey, real quick, uh, yeah. Just so I don't forget about it. Muscles Marinero. With the five dollar love bombs, is Matt rules the type of guy that wears a t shirt in the swimming pool? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, he has that <laughs> kind of vibe. And uh, Tony's Ill- illegitimate bastard child, white chocolate espresso, says lost to the Browns by two, New York by three, 13 to 10 in the fourth versus the Cards, tied 10 to 10 in the fourth versus the Rams. And all those games are quarterback played like trash. Thanks, you man. This is what I'm saying. The Bills have been competitive. Now we have the requisite parts to put ourselves over the edge. I'm I, I'm feeling it, man. You know, people want me to temper my expectations. Don't fucking tell me what to do, bro. I'm feeling good. And look, I would be interested in knowing what it would cost for Bradley Chubb. Um, yeah, I want I want the chat to tell us this. What is the cost of Bradley Chubb? Go ahead, so you tell us in the, the chat. Way, Call in at 252-228-5098. Just to, to kind of add to that, uh, Vaughn Miller, uh, his contract situation, uh, he only had half a season left on his contract. So does Bradley Chubb. Miller was traded by the Broncos to the Rams last year in exchange for a second and third round pick. So would you be willing to give up a second and third round pick? Yes. For Bradley Chubb? Oh, yeah. and if, I, if you get Von Miller production, bro. hell yeah. Yes. And a but if, we, if we if we can essentially do what we did, uh, where we still actually came, a, we would be basically getting rid of Christian McCaffrey's contract and getting extra picks, and then also Bradley Chubb at the same time. Um, the only downside is having to pay him next year, which is fine. You right. gotta Which pay good fine. players. At some point in time, you gotta pay good. You know players, what you is know? that? This is you can. Uh, I'm telling you, defensive ends. This is like when he's about to come into his prime, right? He's had an injured season already. He's come back around. He said, like he's a. This is Brian Burn. Brian Burns. I'm telling you, you draft defensive ends, even the best of the best. Uh, yeah. some to take time to develop. So like, you can't go and just add a defensive end in the draft next year and him be dominant even uh the best like aiden hutchinson is doing well but that defense is struggling like crazy and it's not you know it's there's a learning curve for that position year three is when defensive ends break out in their career usually year four like this is his time you put him with uh brian burns it could be um instant defensive front dominance and this would be a more balanced, I think, line sure. with Bradley Chubb than, you know, I mean, it's just like he's the type of guy who can do everything. The he can only- play the run. He's not like he's not just like Burns. Well, I won't say just like, but, you know, is that Burns the question? You need somebody on the other side that can do everything. I think Bradley Chubb is that type of player. My only, my only holdup is there's, well, I should say there's a two part to this holdup. Okay. Number one is if Bradley Chubb comes here and we aren't a better team and he doesn't want to stay here and doesn't, he doesn't, he comes here for half a season and he leaves after this, right? That's that number one. Would suck. 
Number two is he does want to stay here and we pay him next year. You don't think Brian Burns is going to be pissed as hell that he's not getting paid before Bradley Chubb is getting paid? I know he has money left on his rookie deal, but the dude is putting up night. We're like, we clearly value. Yeah, him. you're probably right. You know what I mean? Like the timeline be could be that. problematic that way. All right. So let's just be honest here is that if you were going to do this, you have to do it with the idea that you're going to keep him beyond this season, right? Like that would be the mm -hmm. only reason you would do it. And then the second is that it would only be great if you want to have him with Burns. Like if you knew that you could pull it off, like you need to be able to know that you're willing to, and that might be hard to do right now when you don't know who the coach is well, to, and what you know, their yeah. vision would be if that, because if you saddled them with that, with two big contracts and they didn't have a choice and they didn't want, you know, that could hamstring that coach and at least, or make them be kind of concerned. I think the fact that uh, after the Christian McCaffrey trade, we now have two fourth round picks. We have one third round pick and we have two second round picks. So again, you're not even completely decimating on your draft. Uh, if you did decide to trade for him. And by the way, like, you know, even like Vaughn Miller with the Rams, get him to make a push and then let him leave in free agency and then pay Brian Burns and then draft another defensive end. Or go look That's to get bad, someone yeah. else in free agency. You know, there's ways like to do this. Guy. Yeah, I mean, we can, are two who, and five, <laughs> and you're talking about trading to make a push. Hold on, hold on. NFC South, here's baby. insane, here's, dude. Here's the it's argument, like it was though. insane talk I've ever heard. Here's the argument: none of this happens until after Sunday. If we don't come out here and right. we don't show a dominant performance against the Falcons, do not be buying shit. But if we come out here and we put a put a <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. If we lose to the Falcons, like what is the exact yeah, it's gonna you, be this conversation that Cody's right. having, but the complete opposite. I get what you're Let's saying. Let's go okay, to number one draft pick. Yeah, it, it just seems it's like it's right. like uh I don't know, like the one more win like puts me in that's kind of like how I feel about players who are this. like it's like drugs, we look at dude. players in the draft and we're like they didn't go to the combine. It's like, well. Did you really need the combine to really make that decision? Like, does one more win really sway you towards one way or the other? Like, I'm I'm in limbo right now, too. I don't know what to feel. But I don't know if one more win or one more loss makes me all in on either side. You know? Well, one more loss is like, come on now. There's a, like, it's crazy. This is what I was trying to say is, like, this is this drug of hope. The drug of optimism is what we're on right now. Like, yeah. give us some more of it. We've helped that we yeah. touched the high right now. Is now we're chasing the dragon. Yeah. Uh, the, that's what my dad would say is don't chase the dragon. Is like kind of trying to keep up with that high right there. Um, um, by the way, guys, if uh, people are talking about uh, Brian Burns not having a 10 sack season, he's on pace for 12 to 13 right now. Yeah, he's playing great this year. He's incredible, man. And I've said that you're not, you haven't even seen Brian Burns play his best football he is i agree with that i agree with that 100 he's continuously getting better you know uh, i think maybe even al holcomb coming back in as our defensive coordinator which that's something that we don't we don't talk about enough holcomb has our defense playing lights out and we're adding people back you know we might even uh see ygm take another step forward so you know I, i'm pumped man like whether or not we start trading or not I think that we have a good defensive core. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't care either way, man. If we decided to trade for Chubb, I'd be pumped about it and what that meant for our season. If we don't, man, dude, I'm drinking the Kool Aid, bro. Can't went to NC care. State, by the way. Went you know, to I NC said that, State. Man. Oh, okay. He's familiar um, with, yeah, he's familiar with the Carolinas. Bring him home. I do want to do a couple plugs before we move on. One is you can help support the podcast by smashing the thumbs up button. Calling in at 252-228-5098 or even <laughs> considering becoming a C3 super fan. Look for the join button for $1.99 a month. You can support the podcast and show your loyalty in the chat with uh, your cool emojis. We're going to be adding. Now we got to add a Wilkes emoji. We got to add a Wilkes emoji right now. That's what we got to do this. Uh, we're doing that after the show. Is, is Wilkes. Blue heart? 
Oh yeah. Emoji. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we can do is this is you can for a dollar ninety nine you get uh to support the show and keep <clears> us growing, man. We have been growing crazily to the point now. Um working on look, we're we're working on five thousand subscribers. So I want everybody to call in at two five two 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 eight. Tell us if we're crazy. Tell us if you're having a good time. Are you on the drug of optimism? Or are you coming down from that high from Sunday? Are we ludicrous for trying to find a scenario where you could pair Bradley Chubb and Brian Burns together? It would really make this defense this year so much better right away. But also, I like the long-term prospects of that. And don't forget, we're sponsored by Prize Picks. We're going to be doing those uh, probably about 15 minutes. I'm going to do the Prize Picks in about 15 minutes. You go to prizepicks.com, you use the promo code C3, you get a 100% First time deposit bonus on daily fantasy football sports. And you can make some real cash doing this. We had a good weekend. Greg had a good weekend. I had a good Sunday. I've lost my one tonight, though, but I got one coming up. I'm on Lamar Jackson. I got who do I got this Sunday? I got um right now I got some hold on. I want to go to the cat calls next. I got Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray. And I'm rolling with Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray on Sunday or my daily fantasy f football plays. But later in the show, in about 15 minutes, we're going to get to where we pick the Panthers. We'll look at the, both the Panthers prize picks and uh, those who they're playing with the Falcons and peak around the league. Use the promo code C3. Uh, Cody, let's go ahead and jump into a few cat calls and hear what the fans got to say before it gets too late. We'll kind of work them in and then we'll come back. We'll kind of come back to some topics and bounce around a little. So what are your thoughts on catcalling? Yeah, it's pretty sh You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think catcalling makes the person feel? It feels two, good, like... Hey, Joey, the Blind Panther. And I got some conflicting feelings. And no, they don't have to do with tanking or anything like that. But how the Panthers make you feel after a win. This you is feel perfect. happy as hell. You feel great. You feel like we're on top of the world after we win. But then two days go by. And you know what it just feels like to me right now? We're on the top of the drop zone. Yeah, like when the, the, the drop zone goes all the way up and up and up and up and up and you're waiting for it to drop. That's what it feels like to me because, I mean, we are the Panthers. We have not had, we have not won two consecutive games since the beginning of last year. Yeah. Never mind having back-to-back -back winning seasons. We haven't won back-to-back -back games. Okay, so that is why it is so, that's why it's so conflicting. Because, like, yeah, dude, like, I believe in this team, but are we going to play like this every uh, every week? And it, it's crazy because this division can be had. We saw Brady, you saw the Buccaneers 